anybody who ever came out this far. Wow, you crossed them all off, like some sort of heroic accountant running down a list. Teach me your ways. Oh, well that's a shame. I mean, I could pay you in Adrena time, but I've already bartered most of my stash over to these poor saps. You, on the other hand, you were a sight to behold.
If I had half your skills, I'd be the greatest outlaw the coast has ever seen. I'm... I've got... Why? Adelaide wants me back on garden duty or something? Thanks, but I'm not going anywhere. And no serial dramas. I've been thinking about going back. I just gotta know if Lord Cavendish really is the masked marketeer. I'll take my stuff and head on back, I suppose. Grace is gonna be glaring knives at me, so I've got that to look forward to. What is it? We didn't always get along, but I'm glad to know she's safe. What happened, anyway? Zoe joined up with a band of marauders. Zoe. The same Zoe who doesn't know a barrel from a trigger. Well, I've heard stranger things. You pretty much did my job for me. Least I could do is pay you for your trouble. Let me know if I can do something for you.
Any progress on that matter we discussed? Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... French? I can't fucking read French. It's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French! Ha! I was so high and mighty, preaching to the yokels about following the plan, while fighting it at every turn. I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Wasted. Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. The story of my life. Most lay people are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter where we found it. I had the worse idea to share my thoughts with a superior. And that's how I ended up assigned prison duty, where I was fool enough to let an inmate bend my ear with stories of an original Bokonu journal. Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure transport. You have a ship. Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew. Free spiritual counseling, someone to watch your back, not to mention a grown-up in the party. I'm 28. Exactly. I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. I'm also a passable gun hand if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking com Well, understanding computers is, though I admit I took it further than most. And I was quite the 32nd back during my penitentiary term. <laughs> Left many an opponent bleeding in the prison yard. Of course. I'm a vicar who is dedicated to his calling. More dedicated than any other you'll find in this colony. I joined the OSI to help decipher the grand plan. But instead, I ended up the vicar in a prison due to ignorance and politics. Then I came here. Satisfied? Fantastic. Let me get- Edgewater's gonna miss you. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery and to leave this place behind. I shall see you on the ship, Captain, whenever you're ready to leave Emerald Vale.
I'm not allowed in here. Not since the vending machine incident. Holcomb, got my eye on you, girl. Miss Holcomb ain't allowed in this establishment. Not since that little incident. Ask her. I won't touch anything while we're in here. Go. Plague? I don't know anything about a plague. We... I take umbrage with your choice of phrase. We ain't sick, we're rugged. Some of us who get sick are liable to exaggerate the conditions of that sickness, but the fact is, if you work hard, you have got no cause to worry. Survival of the fittest. It ain't just the law of nature. It's company. Medical treatment is commensurate with our value to society. Space. Then the hand of medical science will not grace you with its touch and you must recover on the virtue of your own grit. Listen, you mind if we talk about something else? Rambling about company policy gets me feeling all lightheaded. Music to my ears. Rations yet? Yep. Two whole kids. You're not a big drinker, are you?
Get ready. Get
Any luck finding one of those manuals? No kidding! Look at that! Building a computing machine out of Spectrum Potatoes, a primer. I'm just glad it survived all these years. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. In Ain't that just ironical? If I'd worked a little longer back at the cannery, I might have found this myself. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart. Oh, almost forgot your payment.
unexpected. Here they come! Initiated.
The control room should be off to the right. I hope we're doing the right thing. System alert performing an area sweep now. Switches. That'll be easy enough. That's impressive.
processing. Begin. <laughs> happen to Miss McDevitt's folk if we send power to the veil? No, 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 just leave me alone! Mind the scene, you're liable to get scalded. This is 
the power to lift the desert, what happens to the veil? Processing data. sure what the ride is. All I know is the decision's final. You're not real! You're not real! Get away from me, Phantom! Shoot! Scram! Most people? But I'm the only one left. No. Remember your first rule, Higgins. No arguing with the Phantoms. See? See, Higgins? This is why you must always boil your sprats before ingesting. Clearly, I mistook you for one of the phantoms of my imagination, which terrorized me on occasion. Chester D. Higgins, 
The D stands for definitely not insane. I use it as a reminder. Oh, Higgins has been many things over the years. Sprat Wrangler, Saltuna Critic, Aether Wave Personality, Chairman of the Board, Galactic Defender, Sisty Pig Tycoon. I've come a long way for someone who started off as a simple engineer right here in this plant. I specialized in auto mechanicals, drones, sentries, repaired them, maintained, upgraded, did it all from my old workroom just over in the next section. Jimmy'd opened the vending machines. That lasted a good couple of months. Eventually, I had to resort to more unconventional means of filling my insides. Mechanicals lost their bolts. Opened fire on anything that moved. It was pandemonium. I was on cleaning duty at the time. My old boss had me scrubbing pipes when the killing started. So, as usual, I missed out. Look, I don't want to fall into any trouble with the mechanicals. If they wise up to our plans, they will come for us. With prodding irons. You know, you remind me of myself back when I was an intergalactic adventurer. I discovered a flaw. Their hostility levels were hardwired to maximum. There's no changing that, but you could rewrite their targeting protocol so they attack each other instead. Yes, that's exactly it. I see you're also versed in the noble art of mechanical engineering. There's a behavior control terminal in the other room. It should have options to change how the mechanicals act, including whom they shoot at. Oh, ah, that reminds me. You'll need my passcode to access the behavior control terminal. Here, let me just write it down for you. Once we do this, there's no going back. Yeah. Huh? That's on account of how I never met her. It's hard to... Her con... Could be. Reckon I'll never know. He's just interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. Thomas always listened to me. Never said I was odd, never tried to... I just want to think of him like that. If he wants to learn about engineering, we should help him get those data pads he wants. I'd like to do that for him. Excuse me, ma'am. Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. 
Do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Well, that sure sounds like Mr. Thompson. If he was standing here, I imagine he'd remind us of how we're all one big, happy Spacer's Choice family. In Mr. Thompson's eyes, those deserters are still part of the Spacer's Choice family. The family must work together in order to survive. I hate to say it, but I think Mr. Thompson's got a point. Unless those deserters come back, Edgewater's as good as dead. Cutting off their power might be the only way. Miss McDevitt's built something beautiful. Somehow, she's talked the ground into giving life again. It's plain to see she's made the Vale a better place. Fed the hungry, tended the sick. Gave a home to those that had none. But Miss McDevitt delights in Edgewater's suffering. She wants to hurt the town. Do you really want to be party to that kind of hatred? Sorry, I didn't mean to... Really? I mean... One of us want to go see what happened? Everybody keeps staring at... No... The geothermal plant? Now that is... That's a complete... Si um, I'm glad we could help. I've been saving something for you. Auto 
don't know what you did. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil, and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? You killed my garden, destroyed my community, sentenced my flock to a lifetime of slavery in Edgewater for a power regulator. Well, shit, I wish it was personal. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and, and you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. You offering to cross Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. Tell Reed that I can make his people healthy again. I can end their plague. Start a new garden right in the cannery. Three square meals for every man and woman in Edgewater. Tell him how I've made the Vale bloom again. The soil has whispered its secrets to me, and I alone. The secret is human corpses. I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Marauder, worker, don't matter much to me. The human body is rich with nutrients. Edgewater Cemetery's got corpses aplenty, enough for a generation's worth of crops. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. Sorry. Uh, I've been thinking about going back. I'm not much used to anybody here. I get sick thinking about working at the cannery. I can't do that again. You know something? I think you're right. The town could use another engineer, and I'm on my way to becoming one. I could do a lot of good in Edgewater. Maybe even keep a garage of my own with a little workbench and my very own toolbox. It's just... Adelaide's never gonna forgive me. Not in a hundred years. I go crawling back to my old life in Edgewater, and I'm as good as dead to her. Are you sure about this? If we head back to Edgewater on our own... I expect we got no choice. Edgewater needs us back, and loath as I am to admit... You okay with this, Great? My fears are all... Thanks for... Just give us some time.
Heard something outside the walls. Wonder if the plague's ever gonna fly. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them? Go ahead. If I had enough medicine to treat everyone who fell sick, I would, but I don't. I... Adelaide's son was barely competent. I treat him with our medical rations, and it looks like I'm playing favorites. Now, I will not pretend to understand the suffering Adelaide must have felt on account of losing her child, but she is not the only one to have felt such suffering. I wish she had stayed with us. Adelaide left us when we needed her most. Go ahead. It is my job to keep two eyes on my town. I am the steward of this place, and this is my watch post. I wish you wouldn't say things. I expect you wouldn't understand. You don't. When I stand at my window and look out over my town, we are all part of this. The Geo? That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm gonna... Um... I'm glad we could help, Thomas. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. You want my flock wasting their... Go talk to Grace. And you... You kill...
You know, I could do a lot of good in Edgewater. It's just... You know where... I don't know what you did to talk some sense. The man... Zoe came back. But I... I don't see us lasting more than a couple of weeks out here. I'm loath to admit it. We're gonna have to make our peace. Listen, we go. Sure. And your rations yet? Something got you down? Nothing. This is a fine day, friend. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reach. Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been in trouble. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes, but I have done my... I am a spacer's choice man. My father was a spacer's choice man. Edgewater made... I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. The very notion is just grotesque. A raw vegetable? Why don't you just ask me to go chew the bark off of a tree? We are a Spacer's Choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food, but that should not be possible. The soil's gone sour. Company said as much. Our own botanists couldn't grow decent crops for us, so the company got rid of them and shut down the greenhouse. Evidence. Adelaide has a secret, and I want to know what it is. No, but I will...